I've got my top three test-taking strategies you must teach your middle school math students if you want them to do well on your state test. Personally, number two is my favorite. Keep watching because I'm spilling the beans. If you're new around here, my name is Kathy Martin and I help 6th, 7th, 8th grade and Algebra 1 math teachers experience more aha moments in the classroom while saving time and money with lesson planning and resources. So you're a middle school math teacher wanting to improve your middle school math students' test scores. I mean, who doesn't? Here are my top three test-taking strategies that I always teach my students before the big state test. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you so you can see the slides as we jump right in. Okay, so if you are using previously released test questions, which you most likely are, I want you to start by only reading the questions, then discuss, okay? You are going to tell your students that we are going to test prep, but we're not going to answer any of the questions. and they're gonna look at you like, what? I know, your students are gonna get super, super excited. And that's the point. But the reason we're doing this, the reason why we are not actually answering the questions, we're just reading the questions, is because we need, we're need. we gonna dive into test prep strategy one, which is figuring out what is the question asking you to do. S students, in order for them to do well on the test, they have to understand the question, right? If they don't understand the question, how in the world are we going to be able to answer it correctly? So let's dive into kind of what this means or what this looks like, okay? So here's an example, um, previously released test question. Roberto paid $43.08 for three CDs. All three CDs were the same price. How much did each CD cost? Okay, so in this example, I'm going to be asking my students, all right, what do we think is going on here? What do we think we need to do? The question is asking me, how much did each cost, right? That's going to be our key word. So are we going to add? Are we going to subtract? Are we going to multiply? Are we going to divide? And then in our class discussion, we can talk about what does this keyword mean? What is this? What, where have we seen this before? We can talk about strategies on how to solve this problem. We can even talk about how to rephrase this problem so that maybe it makes more sense. We can go into so many directions, but the key here is figuring out what is this question asking me to do? Okay, next example. Dacia made a snack mix using the ingredients listed below. She's using one and quarter cups of granola, uh, three quarter cups of peanuts, half cup of raisins, and a quarter cup of chocolate chips. What is the total amount of all four ingredients? So again, keyword here, total amount. So we're going to go back to, all right, if we know that the keyword is total, what does that, what is it asking me to do? Am I going to add, subtract, multiply, divide? And we can talk about what that means, right? Okay, <clears throat> next, next example. Jason bought a jacket on sale for 50% off the original price and another 25% off the discounted price. If the jacket originally cost $88, what was the final sale price that Jason paid for the jacket? What do we think the keyword here is? All right, final sale price, okay? So this, we're, this is like a multi-step problem. So this is gonna take a little while to kind of go through with your class. Again, we're not solving it, but we're going to be talking about, okay, well, it cost $88, but then he got it on sale for 50% off and then another 25% off. There's so many ways we can take this question because we can take it as 50% off and then do 25%, or does that mean that it's 75% off? Is that the same? Can we figure out what the difference is? Final sale price, what does that mean? Am I gonna add, subtract, multiply, or divide these things? And we got um, percents here. So what does that look like? What are the steps in figuring that out, right? There are plenty of things that we can go dive deep into just this one problem. Um, and I actually really like this question because my students really, really love doing these type of problems where they're doing discounts and tax and things like that because they can really envision themselves 
in this scenario, right? They love all things money. They love all things discounts and tax and things like that because they know that that's a real world skill. All right, so that's strategy number one. Strategy number two, my personal favorite, is look for the dumb bunny. Now, what the heck does that mean? I always like to show my students this silly looking bunny or something like this because it sticks in their head. Like they are gonna remember the dumb bunny during the test. So the dumb bunny basically means we are looking for the obvious answer that we can just cross off. Like it cannot be this answer, right? It helps us narrow down the choices so that it makes it easier for us, right? Like, can we take these four choices and narrow it down to three or two? And then we can pick one from there. Okay, so this question is says, um, which of the following is an irrational number? Keyword here, irrational, right? If we don't know what irrational means, then we can talk about that, right? Maybe we've heard it before, we don't, but we don't remember what it means in terms of math. Um, but if I don't know what it means, like in terms of math, do I know kind of what it means just in terms of real life? If you're being irrational, it means you're just kind of being like wild, right? You're not being of sound mind, right? You're not thinking straight, right? So which of these numbers maybe are ones that aren't thinking straight, are a little bit wild? Now, all of these choices are square roots. And that could possibly lead to another issue in itself. Maybe your students get a reminder of what a square root is. <clears throat> so we'll talk about this. Okay, well, remember, square roots are two numbers that I can multiply together, two, num two of the same numbers that I can multiply together to get an answer. So like four times four is 16. Five times five is 25. So the square root of 25 is five. 6 times 6 is 36, so the square root of 36 is 6, right? Okay, so do I know any of these square roots just off the top of my head? Do I know any two numbers I can multiply to get 144? Do I know any two numbers that I can multiply to get 16, to get 4, to get 3? Well, 144 might be kind of hard. That's a pretty big number, and if I don't know my multiplication skills super well, that might be hard, but 16, yeah, I think I could do 16. Four times four is 16, and four, yeah, two times two, right? So I know, boom, I can cross those out immediately. Those are immediate dumb bunnies. Then I am left with choice A, square root of 144, or choice D, square root of three. And we can kind of go, we can then use some of the our math strategies to, to narrow those down as well. Okay, next. This sweater, a sweater originally cost $37.50. Last week, Moesha bought it at 20% off. How much was deducted from the original price? Okay, so keyword here is deducted, right? And I can look at these choices, $7.50, $17.50, $20, or $30. If I'm looking at the original question, it cost $37 and it's on sale for 20% off. Well, okay. I can teach, I can have my students think of this as, all right, let's just round this, round this for really quick, 37, let's round it to a nice even 10, right? So 37 would round up to 40, okay? I might not know what 20% off of 40 is, but can I do half off? Can I do 50% off? I can do that, that's pretty easy, right? Half of 40 is 20, right? Okay, so that's 50% off versus 20% off. Now I'm looking at my choices. If 50% off is $20 off of $40, can I just get rid of this 20? Because I know 20% off is not going to be, $20 is not going to be 20% off of 37. All right, I can get rid of 20. And if it ain't 20, it certainly ain't 30. So boom, I can get rid of those two answers immediately as my dumb bunny. And then now I can go and figure out, all right, how do I figure out what is 20% off of 37.50? What does deducted mean, right? And these are all strategies that we can help our students work through. Okay, help, I've narrowed it down to two answer choices and now I don't know what to do, right? How many times have we been in that situation ourselves and now we see our own students in the situation as well? Okay, so which is, leads me to test prep strategy three, which is to really think about all the strategies that we've learned this year, okay? So if we are looking at a question like this, which of the following is equivalent to five over two? I have 2.25, 2.5, 5.2, 5.25. All right, so we're gonna think about 
what does equivalent mean, right? If, and we're going to ask ourselves, what do I know about what a fraction means, right? Fractions usually means divide. Okay, can I easily divide this? All right, so five over two, if I divide anything by two, I just mean I'm splitting it in half, right? So what's half of five? Uh, I don't know, like it's got to be more than two, right? Somewhere between more than two. So does this make sense that, th that this could be five or any of the fives really? If I, if one thing I like to do with my students is always try to put things in terms of money. So if I said, what's half of $5, right? How do you write $5? 5 dollars 5.00, right? What's half of that? I don't know, but it's not going to be $5 and 25 cents. That makes no sense. And it's certainly not going to be $5 and 20 cents. Makes no sense. So I can take out these two um, options, boom, get rid of the dumb bunny, right? Okay, I can go back to the irrational number um, question from before. I might not know what irrational means, but what do I know about square roots, right? I, I think I know that there are two numbers, two of the same numbers, right? Even if you don't know how squ square roots like work, is it easier to just work with the three? Can I think of any number that I can multiply together that are the same? that I can get three. One times one doesn't work. Two times two is four. Three times three is nine. I'm not hearing a three in there. So I'm gonna assume I can get rid of 144 and my answer is probably three. And there you have it. Check out the next video where I'm gonna be sharing my favorite whole class review games to make test prep fun and engaging. You are not gonna believe it, but your students will be begging you to play these games. Register now for our next free training all about test prep success, specifically for middle school math teachers just like you, where I'm going to show you everything you need to prepare for our state test with easy, relevant, and practical math strategies just like this that you can use and get started right away. And you're going to be able to print a certificate for one hour of attendance. All you have to do is click the link right below this video and sign up right now for our next free training. See you in our next video. Bye for now.